Hello, Ray Phoenix here, and welcome to Let's Play Mega Man X Part 6. So we're going to continue on with the Sigma stages. This is Sigma Stage 2. So this level, this level is a Sigma sending the same, our usual array, usual assortment of all the same enemies we've seen since the very beginning of this game. Even Sigma likes recycling his own enemies, his own enemies, and, and still likes using them. Even in the Sigma stages, we do some more Donkey Kong-esque platforming while we jump on those moving platforms or we run around for here. And the stage is pretty much a large, I guess you could say it's like a large homage to the, a large homage to the, to the, all the robot masters we destroyed this so far. You can dash in this game. The best way to dash is to press the dash button. But that's kind of hard to do that on a keyboard controller. So I usually just dash by pressing left or right so many times. I'm playing this on Retro Arch of a keyboard, which as I said before, Retro Arch doesn't doesn't let you like map your own control scheme when using a keyboard. It just you have to pretty much use retro arts. The arch is some, you know, array of keys or what retro arch recognizes as different keys and just set it there and just change the key mapping there. So it doesn't give you the full freedom that a non-retro arch or an emulator not part of retro arch would would give you, which I think is kind of dumb. I mean retro arch is okay if you're using a controller. It's good for for I mean, if you're using controller. It's also mostly popular too if you're playing this on a non- PC system, like maybe if you're installing RetroArch on an Xbox 360 or a PS3 maybe, or even, even in Raspberry Pi. I have RetroArch in the Raspberry Pi. I always use a PS1 controller for that, and it works really good overall. And most people just say, well, if you're using a PC, they might as well just use a standalone emulator. But I guess I can see why they think that. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of odd that RetroArch, you know, they, they should be emulation masters. They should know that people like to use the whole keyboard for playing games. Not just half of the keyboard, not even half, more like the, just the left quadrant of the keyboard. So Chill Penguin was destroyed easy. Chill Penguin is, is still just as big of a wuss as he ever was before. And, better, and he hasn't been upgraded at all, but we were heavily upgraded as you can see. So that's why we destroyed him easy. I don't think any of the Mavericks have been upgraded since the last time we saw them. So we could just plow through them easy or rip them apart easy because now we have better health, and better firepower, and better everything. We just plow through this game. It's going to our own mech and just plow for everything. It has a lot of damage. It has a lot of havoc and pretty much break everything and destroy everything and, and obliterate everything that comes out on the screen. Is there Mega Man X? What else does Mega Man X do? It's his job to destroy and obliterate on any of the evil robots imaginable or any robots on the screen. Also, one flaw that he actually has in common of classic Mega Man is that he's not. doesn't have any resistance to when he gets hit. He's on a ladder. Because just because classic Mega Man, if he was on a ladder and he got hit, he would just fall off. He would just fall below. That was, a, that was that's what made that Cossack stage. You know, that's what made that Cossack stage, stage absolutely painful is that he had to... Mega Man had to climb on those ladders and had to avoid getting hit at the same time. And, and I think it was the first or one of the first Cossack stages in Mega Man 4. But Mega Man X doesn't really have that problem right now because he has Sting Chameleon's weapon. And fully charged Sting Chameleon's weapon allows him to just run through everything without getting a single scratch. Sting Chameleon's weapon is by far one of the greatest weapons in the Mega Man franchise. We're in the sky again, so of course we're going to fight against Storm Eagle, the second biggest wimp in this game next to Chill Penguin. Storm Eagle's wuss, he can just go down easy. You're not even gonna use his weakness. I'm not even sure what his weakness is. I think it's Sting Chameleon's weapon. Obviously uncharged, but I think it's Sting Chameleon's weapon, but I don't know, I have no idea. I never I never use his weakness against him. I always just use the X Buster, because he's that big of a wuss. And Chill Penguin's weakness is Flame Mammoth's weapon, because this game uses the same sense of logic that Mega Man 6 uses, where ice type robot masters or ice type robots are we're weak towards fire type type ones like the like fire the fire's weapon is is a weakness for the ice type robot master it's a Mega Man six which is just contradict the logic of Mega Man one so Mega Man one Fireman was weak against Iceman's weapon Iceman was Fireman's weakness but in Mega Man six and Mega Man X now it's the ice type one that's that's weak against the fire type weapon the fire type weapon is a weakness to the ice type robot master. I think if Capcom knew how the series was going to turn out in total, I think they would have. I think they would have done something differently if Mega Man won. I think they probably would have made a difference. So Iceman's weakness is Fireman's weapon. That would have probably made more sense to a lot of people because fire melts ice. But of course, Mega Man One wasn't even really that big of a hit. They only made Mega Man Two because Capcom just needed another game. They just want this. They just wanted another game, and Mega Man Two ended up being the game that made Capcom that made Capcom's Mega Man what it is. Mega Man 2 is a game that revolutionized the Mega Man series. Mega Man 2 is the reason why this game exists and why most of the other Mega Man games and most of the other series of Mega Man reason why they exist is because of Mega Man 2. 
I mean, Mega Man 2 was never one of my favorites, but I guess I owe a lot to it because he has the reason why all this better stuff exists. So I guess I kind of, you know, give it credit there for that. <laughs> Took a run for all these, all these things. We're going to get another homage to another classic Robot Master. Or, I think this is actually boss time now. We're going to take on... That's right, this isn't a Robot Master. It's boss time already, man. This all slipped by really fast. I have no idea what this thing's weakness is. I have no idea what it is. So most of the time I just I randomly guess what it is. Or if I can't just guess, I just use the X-Buster. The X-Buster is actually a pretty good weapon against this thing. This, you know, this, what you call this, what you call this thing. It looks almost like a modern art masterpiece of some sort. With Sigma's logo painted on his forehead. And he opens up his eyes and he gets shoot at him. I think just using the X-Buster is probably just the best thing to use against him anyways. I'm glad this thing doesn't do a Mega Man 2 does, where the only way to kill some of the bosses is to use a specific weapon. Kind of like the boss in one of the Wily stages where you had to use Crash Man's weapon. You had to, like, carefully, like, plan out the shot the number of shots you use and you mess up. It's pretty much game over because that dumb Mega Man 2 was. Mega Man 2 was a really dumb game in a lot of ways, which is why I think it's overrated. The final boss of Mega Man 2 is also kind of like that. We're going to defeat him if you have Bubble Man's weapon. Yeah, Mega Man 2 was kind of a dumb game for that reason. It shouldn't have to be required to use a specific weapon to like, run out and have a such, you know, such a harsh punishment for not... for not clearing, for you never know, running out of power or something like that, running out of energy or something like that. Thankfully, this game doesn't do anything like that, and that's part of the reason why I like this game so much, is because it, you know, doesn't do that. That's why Mega Man X is such a masterpiece, and Mega Man 2 is overrated. I, mean, I don't think Mega Man, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I just don't think it's as good as everyone says it is. I like almost every classic Mega Man game, and almost every Mega Man X game more than Mega Man 2. But Mega Man 2 is probably better than some of the other bad, genuinely bad Mega Man games. There actually are quite a few Mega Man games that are genuinely bad. Like Mega Man X7. I don't even want to, I don't even want to talk about Mega Man X7 in the same sentence that I use this game. And this game is awesome. This game's a classic. But Mega Man X7 just spits on this game. Just takes this game in and makes a complete total mockery of it. And Mega Man X6 does that same thing too. I don't even like mentioning that game anyways. I'm probably never going to do a Let's Play of those games anyways. Because, you know, they just suck. So sorry if you're expecting those Let's Plays from me. Those aren't going to happen. Go see someone else. Go see Climate J642. Or maybe even that guy that put Mega Man X7 into a blender and blended it in and made a smoothie or made a, what do you call it, puree of Mega Man X7. <laughs> so I'm going to do some off-screen grinding and chill penguin stage. So we're going to head off to the next Sigma stage, and it's another climbing stage, much like Boomer Kwanger or Donkey Kong again, where we just go and climb up, and there's more of this around the same assortment of enemies we've been seeing throughout the... Well, look at that, just one charge shot, a few unchar fully charged shot, and a few uncharged shots destroys that turtle thing easy. So here's... what's this guy's name? Oh yes, Armored Armadillo, and he's never learned from his mistakes, so he's still just as weak to... Yeah, so he's still just as weak to Spark Mandrill's weapon as he's ever been before. Just one shot of it makes his armor come. It's almost redundant that we have to fight all these bosses again, especially in the way it's presented in two. We just take them on like they're nothing. It'll be a more of a challenge if this made us do the gauntlet like, like how it was in Mega Man 2, but then they don't give us any health for fills or give us very little health for fills. That would be a real challenge. But no, this game is too easy. If this that's why the original Mega Man in this game and Mega Man and Base are the only Mega Man games I know of have the boss gauntlet done in this fashion. Yeah, that's right, even Mega Man and Base does it like this. But Mega Man and Base is a nightmare to a lot of people. I'm probably going to do a Let's Play of that game eventually, but I don't know when that's going to be. Mega Man and Base is a complete total nightmare, especially in the Wily stages in that game and in the King stages. Yeah, that game's a complete total nightmare, but oddly enough, it's on the same system that this game is on. The SNES. And it came out five years later, and the SNES is pretty much dead in North America and pretty much everywhere else in the world. There's Sting Chameleon, and his weakness is exactly the same. And we just have to eat, but he actually has an advantage, because our because his weakness is a very unpredictable weapon. If I get a rhythm on him, that could be good. Like, see, now I'm taking away more health than he is taking away on me, so I actually am eating away quite a generous amount of his health right now. Look at that, almost like three quarters of his health is gone. It's all because I'm just standing here and using- I think he actually got dumber since we last saw him because he doesn't seem to be like, you know, resorting to anything else. Or resorting to going invisible or- or anything. I think he can go invisible, but he's not seeming to resort to that right now. And we just destroyed him like he was nothing. It's like he's not even trying. He just thinks, ah, what's the point? Sigma doesn't pay me enough to do this. 
So what's the point of even doing this at all? Why work for free, pretty much? So we're going to what looks like pipe works or something like that, or the plumbing barrier, the sewage system, or something like that. Or where these pickaxe things are hanging around. we we'll use Boomer Quanger's weapon to recover this health we have right here. Go take that and we'll fully fill up our health, or mostly fully fill up our health. And look at that, there's a there's, there's an energy refill there. Let's go that and we'll, we'll take that and we'll fill our health. And, and energy is refilled between the levels too. It's not everything that makes this game a lot easier than in the classic Mega Man series. Between those Sigma stages, it does fully refill our health. Now who's this? Oh look, it's Spark Mandrill. Spark Mandrill's big as a big wuss when he uses weakness. You just freeze him easy like he's nothing. Just keep freezing him. I'm not even really doing much. Just occasionally jumping every now and then. Destroying him. This is one of the easiest things ever. One of the easiest things I've ever played before is this. Sometimes I think the weaknesses are overpowered sometimes. I think this game does have really powerful weapons. That's probably why this game has the best weapons in the Mega Man X series. The weapons in X2 and all the sequels are nowhere near as good as the weapons in this game. I guess I could see why they did that then. So Spark Mandrill is permanently dead now. What's beyond here? Oh look at this, they're going underwater now. This is gonna this is vaguely remind me of a weird game I once played called Pin called Pinball Fish. I'm true to its name, it has nothing to do with actual pinball. So it's a breakout clone that I played on a chi it was a Game Boy Advance game, but I played it on a Chinese PSP as a Game Boy Advance emulator, and it's that one my father bought for me in late 2011. And oddly enough, unlike that Android gaming tablet he bought for me in 2014, this Chinese PSP, this bootleg Chinese PSP actually still works and can still be used to play games and listen to music. I should make a video about it eventually. I actually wanted to make a video about it a long time ago, but I never got around to that for some reason. So now, see, when we use Boomer Kalanger's weapon on, on Launch Octopus, see, it takes away his, his arms. So now, you, we, we could you could fully exploit his weakness against him, which is Armored Armadillo's weapon. Now he doesn't have arms anymore, he can't do anything about it to stop him now. We can just go and spam it, it's going to take away the majority of his health right now. We have a really good weapon now, we use them, we can now fully, you know, exploit his weaknesses now that we have all the weapons in the game. And then his health is like, you know, like, like only a sliver left if he thinks Sting Chameleon's weapon, which I don't think that's his weakness. I don't even think it's possible for Maverick, well, actually, well, I know about Mavericks, but I know in the classic Mega Man series some Robot Masters had more than one weakness. Kind of like Metal Man and Mega Man 2, his ultimate weakness is his own weapon. So now Launch Octopus is dead, I think there's still at least one more Maverick that we haven't taken on yet. For these spikes, if we use Sting Chameleon's weapon and fully charge, it also allows us to run on spikes too without getting killed. What's the point? You can only hold up to 9 lives in this game. And I already have all, I already have all 9 lives, I haven't been killed once yet up to this point. But I think this is, might be one of the first times I've ever played this game without getting killed. I do it on a keyboard too, so that's saying a lot. So here's Flame Mammoth. His weakness is still is still the Storm Eagle's weapon. So he just barely do anything at all. Just stand on this stupid belt thing and just keep firing at him. Look at that, I took out several of his health. There's no pause trick in this game either, like how in Mega Man 1 where you can press the select button while Mega Man fires a weapon into Yellow Devil. Then it can make the same beam of energy or whatever it is, beef beam of lightning or whatever it is, do more damage against him. That's, you know, Mega Man 1's the only game that allows anything like that. There's none of that in this game. But that's probably because it was cheap. I don't think that was even intended to be in the game at all. And without that, I probably would have never beaten Mega Man 1. Because Mega Man 1's also a very, you know, crust, crusty game, so what a lot of people would say. It's filled with all kinds of, of dumb BS moments. Now here's the boss of this level. We just, I don't know what this thing's weakness is, but it's gonna destroy him using the regular X-Buster. This spot guy is actually kind of easy, actually. He just moves around like voo voo. He doesn't do a lot of damage to us. He's more just a, you know, like a minor nuisance than anything else. Just go and shoot him like that. I already have a tenth of his health gone. Just shoot, like I've been using like fully charged shots against him. And I'm like destroying this thing easy. So now we can just use one of our sub-tanks. Why else would I do a lot of grinding? It would be useless if I did a lot of grinding for sub-tanks that I never used. But then so we just send out a lot of shots into him. I don't even think they need to be fully charged. They just be like, we're doing to recharge at all. They just send, send like just completely uncharged buster shots and it takes away most of his health or destroys a, or obliterates a lot of what his health is. Just flying back and forth like that. The shot went into him, shot went into there. His health is nearly, is very low. I'm about to win this easy. Most of the bosses, and this is actually, is probably, I have all the Sigma bosses in this game, this is probably the easiest one. 
That's definitely, that's actually a VV of Sigma boss in the game. They should have put the spider in this level. And this one should have been in the first level of the game, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think progressive difficulty is something. Since none of Mega Man games ever have progressive difficulty, right? This has a sliver of his health left, and he's been destroyed. An easy victory. He barely did anything to us. Now we cleared three of the four Sigma stages. That means up next, we're taking on Sigma and finally ending this stupid conflict. This war has been going on since the very first part of this game. And there aren't any weapons or anything we collect from these stages. It's just going to take us right to the next. It's going to take us back to the level select screen where we can go take on Sigma. This is Ray Phoenix signing out.